So we set out to test the difference in two means. Um, in this case, we're dealing with uh, dog biscuits and we want to measure the protein content in percent um, of each uh, biscuit. We have two, two different methods uh, with which we can measure the protein content and we're interested in finding out if the two methods produce significantly different results on average. Um, so what we've done is we've taken 10 biscuits, measured the protein content using method A uh, on five of these biscuits and five of them we've used method B. And um, we don't know the variance uh, involved in this experiment. And uh, however, we could test whether there's a variance homogeneity. So we use an F test to determine whether we're able to uh, reject the hypothesis that the two um, methods have the same variance. And in this case, the F test, which I'm not going to show here in this video, the F test, S, sorry, the F test concludes that uh, the variances of method A and B are significantly different. So we cannot assume that they have the same variance. So what that means is that we cannot pull the variances as we did in the other t-test of two samples. Um, so we have, a, have to use a different test statistic. Um, the one we will use looks like this. In the book they call it t-naught star and it's equal to the sample mean of method A minus the sample mean of method B minus the hypothesized difference divided by the square root of the sample standard deviation of sample 1 divided by the sample size and uh, the standard deviation of sample, the sample standard deviation of sample B divided by the sample size. So this equation is in the book as well. And um, so this is very much like the, the set test for two samples, except we use the sample standard deviations instead of the uh, population standard deviations. So I just want to remind you that um, this test statistic has approximately a T distribution with new degrees of freedom. And what is new? Well, that's a number that you have to calculate. It's a little involved, but let's just write the formula here. It's SA squared over NA plus SB squared over NB, everything squared here, divided by SA squared over NA, everything squared, divided by NA minus 1, plus the same thing for the B sample, NB minus one. So this formula results in a number, and that number is the degrees of freedom in the t-distribution corresponding to this test statistic. Uh, the reason we do it this way is because uh, not knowing uh, the variances and not being able to pool the variances, well, that introduces some extra uncertainty in our test. So we need to weaken the test by computing this number of degrees of freedom and um, um, and in that sense we take into account the increased uncertainty of our information. So let's do that in Excel. Here we have the, the data, the measurements. 
And the first thing we need is the sample mean. So I'll write middle, you write average in English of this sample here. And the same thing for the other measurement method. And uh, we need the standard, the sample standard deviations. You write std dot dev, I believe in English. Remember, it's the sample standard deviation that you need. And the same goes for the v method. And then the sample sizes, that's five and five in both cases. And now we can compute the test statistic. That's the difference of these two means and the hypothesized difference. And then we need the square root, SQRT in English. In Danish, it's a little different. And the square root of the sample standard deviation for A squared divided by the sample size of A plus the sample standard deviation for method B divided by the sample size. Like that. That gives us a test statistic of minus 1.29. And then we need to compute the number of degrees of freedom. And that's this heavy formula here. SA squared divided by NA plus SB squared divided by NB everything squared divided by now put a bracket around the denominator and another bracket for s a squared divided by n a square that divide by n a minus one so that's this part over here and now we need this part s b squared divided by n b and that should be squared and divided by n b minus one n b minus one and we close the denominator bracket and we get 5.4 something degrees of freedom now that should be rounded down to five. We always round down the mu parameter here uh, because the, the more degrees of freedom the t-distribution has, the more precise it gets. And we want to be on the sure side. We, wanna, uh, we don't want to make a claim that's more precise than what we can actually um, than what the data actually allows us to, to do. So staying on the safe side means rounding down to a, a less a number of degrees of freedom. Right, and now we can compute the p-value. p-value is just as, as it usually is for the t-test. Uh, so it's one minus, and then we need the cumulative t-distribution t dot dist, I believe it's called in, in English. Here it's t for dating in Danish. And we insert the absolute value of our test statistic. And then the degrees of freedom. And we write true for cumulative in Danish descent. Like that. Close the brackets. And we get a p-value of roughly 25%. So if our level of significance is 5%, that means we 
um, cannot reject the null hypothesis. In other words, <clears throat> we don't have statistical evidence to say that the mean results of these two methods are significantly different at level 5%. Now, if we if you look at the numbers here, the method A here produces some different results, and the same thing goes for method B. Now, we don't know if that difference arises is due to the method or is due to the biscuits. If we believe that the biscuits actually have different protein content, um, we don't know that. But if we had some kind of idea that that was the case it might be uh, cleverer to to do a different kind of test namely to choose one biscuit and then measure the protein content on that biscuit using both methods and then take another biscuit and measure the protein content on that biscuit using both methods and so on so that means only doing only taking five biscuits um, and then subtracting the results and then thus generating a new sample here the difference sample you call it and then do a normal single sample t-test on that sample here um, what we achieve by doing this trick here is that we el uh, eliminate the variance between the biscuits there may not be any variance uh, maybe the, all the biscuits have the same protein content I, I don't know but if there is a significant variance we can use this trick to to eliminate that variance and only focus on the variance between the two methods which is actually the variance that we care about this test here, uh, I talk about in another video, it's called the paired t-test.